halfway through the 2015 season, and the best in women's halfpipe are rising to the top. Kelly Clark, a veteran, who's won every title there is to win, continues to push herself and remains the benchmark of greatness in the sport. Motivated not only by winning, but by what the sport has given her and what she can give back. Today, we take a closer look at what life is like for this legend in her own time. Rising more than 11,000 feet above sea level, the volcanic peak of Mammoth Mountain Ski Resort is an impressive part of the Inyo National Forest skyline. Long known as having some of the best terrain in the U.S., Mammoth was also one of the first to the park and pipe game, making it a logical home for many of the top riders in the industry. Mammoth's notoriety also makes it a great place for this week's event the second stop of the U.S. Snowboarding Grand Prix. Snowboarders and skiers from around the world have made the trip to Mammoth in order to compete in this important event. Among those riders are veteran and gold medalist Kelly Clark. Although she didn't have to travel far at all, as Mammoth is where this Vermont native now calls home. I moved to Mammoth when I was 18 years old and the the old coach of the U.S. snowboard team lived here and we spent so much time training here that I thought if I was going to be on the road forever, I might as well be home part of the time. I actually was kind of on a, I don't know, a trial period where I had convinced my dad to, to let me defer from school for one year to show him that I can make snowboarding a career. And um, I made the Olympic team that year and, and that season for me was really my breakout year. I won the X Games, I won the U.S. Open and I won the Olympics. The Olympic champion and gold medalist, Kelly Clark. And I think that was the, the first thing I said to my dad after I won the Olympics, you know, in the stands, everybody's in tears and I'm asking him, does this mean I don't have to go to college? Is this enough to show you that I can make this a career? Following her fourth Olympic Games and third medal in Sochi, Kelly hasn't slowed down at all heading into the 2015 season. She has multiple podiums this year including wins at the Copper Mountain Grand Prix and the Burton European Open. A lot of people have come up to me this season and said, wow, we thought you were going to take a break or, um, you know, not go as hard. But for me, I, I have the same motivation as I've always had. And to be quite honest, at this point in the game, if I took my foot off the gas, I'm not sure I'd get the engine started again. So I'm content just plugging along, working on my goals. This week's event marks the midpoint for the snowboarding season. It's the second of three on the Grand Prix schedule. Kelly and a few of the other female riders are in the hunt for the overall Grand Prix title. Uh, whatever kind of wax you put on there is making it really windy. <laughs> okay, I'll switch it up. The morning of qualifying reveals clear skies, but there's a stiff wind, poison for a halfpipe event. It's definitely pretty gusty in there. You don't quite know what you're going to get. With some athletes easily going 30 feet above the floor of the pipe, being blown just inches from their desired landing can be very dangerous. I think outdoor winter sports are hard because <laughs> there's so many elements that you can't control. But wind is something that is, is um, probably the most challenging thing to manage. After taking a wait and see approach, the officials are forced to cancel the event entirely. A low pressure system is blown in off the Pacific, creating impossible conditions for the athletes. Today we were dealing with wind, we were dealing with snow, we were dealing with rain, with visibility, with fog. I mean, it was basically any sort of weather you could imagine. With the event canceled, Kelly's focus now shifts to her other passion, giving back with the Kelly Clark Foundation. I've had a very long snowboard career and I've been so thankful for it, but that will come to an end at some point. Maybe not too soon, <laughs> but at some point it, it will come to an end and I wanna make sure that this, 
this industry that I've invested into for half of my life that I continue to have an impact. My family really invested into my future, and they really invested into uh, enabling me to pursue my dreams. And I've had some of the best results anyone could ever dream of. And I thought, you know, to whose benefit is it apart from my own if that's all I leave in the snowboarding industry? Over the last five years, we've given out almost $100,000 in grants to kids all across the U.S. All of you guys are a part of this dream of mine, and I'd just like to say thank you for coming out tonight. A successful event doesn't always mean a podium. For Kelly's foundation, it means important funds for up-and-coming riders who might not get it otherwise, an endeavor which is as important to Kelly as any title could be. With Mammoth in the rear view, Kelly's focus now shifts to Park City, the next stop on the Grand Prix Tour. U.S. Snowboarding 36 is brought to you by Bose, better sound through research. And by Paul Mitchell, style isn't born, it's groomed. With the Mammoth event canceled, the Grand Prix Tour has moved to its next location, the iconic resort town of Park City, Utah. Location of the 2002 Winter Olympic Games, Park City was also the site of Kelly's gold medal run in the halfpipe at just 18 years old. This could possibly be the first gold medal awarded to America at these 2002 Winter Games. Some athletes come and go, but Kelly has remained the winningest and most successful pipe rider in the 12 years since her Olympic gold. Despite the limited snow year, the Park City crew has put together one of the best halfpipes in the country. They continue to deliver world-class events, and we love coming here. Terrain Park Manager Jeremy Cooper has been around since the beginning and understands it's a team effort to get the pipe where it is today. We finished the number one park and pipe this year, which is a huge honor. This is probably the best team I've had in uh, my 15 years as a terrain park guy. Qualifying for the Park City Grand Prix has brought a strong international field as this is also a World Cup event, where athletes collect valuable points for the overall World Cup title and future Olympic Games. Kelly arrives feeling ready to go after having a month off due to the mammoth cancellation. That's the way to start it out right there. It's really abnormal that we would have a month off in the middle of our season, so I didn't know how I was gonna feel coming to Park City, uh, but my snowboarding was, was right where I wanted it to be and I'm happy to be back in an event setting. I'm at, this, is, this, is what I, this is what I like. After warming up, Kelly and others drop in for practice runs on the near pristine half pipe. Kelly is pleased with her performance, which usually bodes well for competition. It was a good morning. I felt confident, I felt strong. I had a great practice. I landed every run I tried. I had to tweak a few tricks here and there, work with my coaches to get my sevens working well together and to stay on my wall on my front five. Um, but it went good. Qualification is a two-run format where the best run counts. The top six female riders will advance to the finals the following day. The U.S. is represented by a strong field of riders including Olympic gold medalist Hannah Teeter and breakout star Ariel Gold. Qualifiers for me are sometimes strategic. I'm not gonna come and do my best run in qualifiers because I don't want to have to live up to something in the judges' eyes come finals. That qualification spot becomes actually really important when you get to finals because it determines a start order. So I qualified first for finals, I'm gonna run six. So by the time I go for my last run in finals, I'm gonna know what position I'm, I'm sitting in, and that can be an advantage. With veteran focus, Kelly is ready for her first run and drops in. Kelly comfortably sticks her first run with a 
it went as good as I could have hoped it went. I landed my first run, which is always a relief. Um, no matter how many times you've done this, you know, you still have anticipation, you know, you're still geared up for a contest, which is probably healthy if I didn't do that. If I wasn't, uh, if I didn't have nerves, I'd probably have a problem. <laughs> Ariel Gold also has a great run. making her the only other American in the finals. Already in the top spot, Kelly increased her second run score in order to practice the run she plans to execute in tomorrow's final. So for me today, I upped my score on my second qualifier run and it wasn't necessary, but for me, that was the run that I wanted. I ended up with two of the higher scores of the day and made a final, so that's, that's the name of the game on qualifiers day. Life for a pro snowboarder isn't all competition. Later that day, Kelly and gold medalist slopestyle skier Joss Christensen set up in the sponsor village for an autograph signing. What's, what's your name? Spencer. How do you spell that? Yes. There you go, buddy. Yeah, you're welcome. Some hat? Sure. Where would you like it? All right. You know, I heard a story this fall from Sage, and he was telling me how right after the Olympics, I was doing an autograph signing here in Park City with. Um, with Ross and a few different people who medaled in the Salt Lake City Games, and Sage was a little kid who came through, and he said he's got he's got my autograph on a jacket from when he was a kid. You know, so you see stuff like that, you just never know whose autograph you'll be signing. Another chance to give back to the sport and fans that Kelly feels so grateful for. The storm's out by tomorrow, huh? I hope so. With light snow in the overnight forecast, not only will Park City Resort's guests be happy, but the pipe should be in perfect condition for tomorrow's Grand Prix Final. Sunday morning reveals a fresh four inches of snow. A delight for the locals here to ski and ride, but not enough to be a factor in today's Grand Prix Final. Yeah, a little kind of harmless snow happening right now. The pipe looks really, really good. Um, they did a great job dyeing it, so the visibility, even though it's snowing, the visibility is pretty okay in there, and uh, it should be a great day. Head judge Sandy McDonald arrives for what will undoubtedly be an aerial spectacle in the half pipe today. He and the other judges have the difficult job of tallying the scores and deciding on a winner. Basically, we look for the execution of all the maneuvers in the trick uh, of, of the run, the amplitude, the variety, and the trick difficulty. And then we look at some nuances where we look at combinations, some risk, progression, and how you put the run together. Sandy, like most judges, is very familiar with Kelly Clark. I've been judging uh, Kelly for, I, geez, almost 10 years now, I believe. And she's been progressing the sport of women's snowboarding beyond anything. It's incredible. I'm glad she's still a part of it. Hope she keeps going. How are you feeling? Good. Good. First full day yesterday. Oh, nice. nice. Kelly arrives feeling rested and ready to go. It was actually nice to have a full day off snow in between qualifiers and finals. This morning I, I, I rested, I, I liked the sleep in. Sleeping in this morning was, was nice. Today's event will feature the best male and female riders in the world. Yeah. All will compete in a three run format where the best run will count. Down there, instead of sleds, they're they have like a sleigh hook to a, a cat. It's actually cats that are gonna pull, yeah, pull the sleigh up, yeah. Snow kitty? Snow kitty, it's a snow cat, so. Earlier in the week, she met with some of the Burton Chill kids as part of the work her foundation does. With my foundation, we support other snow-related nonprofits. So, um, you know, that's a foundation that we've really wanted to support for some years now, and we were able to give them a grant. You know, it's one thing to give money, but it's, it's another to really get face time with the kids for me and to integrate it into what I do and to share experiences out on the hill. The things that I've learned through snowboarding have just been invaluable and helped me kind of grow up into the person that I am. It's like every life, life lesson that you, um, you know, discuss your themes of the week and persistence and different things. It's like those are the things that you can learn that not only will help you be successful snowboarders, but also help you be successful people and whatever that looks like in school and sports and life and work. Today, some of her newfound fans have come up to watch her compete. 
and we picked three of the young ladies to come up and get VIP passes to the Grand Prix and watch me compete. With the course open, athletes start dropping in to get a feel for the pipe in their all-important practice runs. I'm just taking my time here. Yeah, 45 minutes is some time to practice, so you don't need that much. Oh, yeah, nice and mellow. Stretched and warmed up, it's Kelly's turn. Kelly about to drop. Kelly drop. Yeah, Kel. Nice and easy. Halfway oh. through her run, Kelly yeah. unexpectedly takes a hard cool. fall. Kelly just went down. Somebody check her out. I took one of the harder slams I've taken in a long time, and I caught my heels in the flat and went straight back to my head. Um, I. I smashed my jaw together pretty good, and I gave myself a pretty good headache. Uh, and for me, I'm, I'm always conservative in that. I, I never want to mess with head injuries. I never want to push it when I shouldn't. After getting checked out by staff and coaches, Kelly is medically cleared to continue snowboarding. At all of our events, they provide us with a, with a doctor on site, so uh, he was able to check me out right at the bottom. She drops in for one last practice run before the start of finals, revealing she's okay physically, but mentally might be another story. Having qualified first, Kelly will be the last to go in run one of today's final. With just the U.S. girls left to go, teammate Ariel Gold drops into the pipe. Taylor Gold qualifying for the Olympic team, the U.S. Olympic team in 2014. Starting things out with the method, now spinning. Kelly looks on. Side 900, landing the front side 900, upping the ante there, and then a backside 540, one and a half rotation. Only a solid first run will prove that she's able to overcome the physical and mental setbacks of the painful crash in practice. Very technical run, that's what I can say about that one. The front side 900, first one we've seen here today. Uh, and she's seen. done it, 88.75 oh, yeah. for Ariel Gold, your number one spot. Boom, just like that, almost in the 90s. U.S. Snowboarding 36 has been brought to you by Bose. Better sound through research. And by Paul Mitchell, style isn't born, it's groomed. The girls came out strong in run number one. Kai Shutong of China, really showing that China is a force to be reckoned with in women's half-pipe competition, going big and being smooth. And then it was Ariel Gold. Ariel Gold pushing hard, that huge front side 900 slob grab, coming around on that perfectly. Really coming up in the ranks here, just like her brother, Taylor Gold. With all other riders except Kelly having taken their first run, it's U.S. rider Ariel Gold currently sitting in first place. It's lonely at the top, especially after a hard fall. It's easy to start questioning yourself. For Kelly, it's the backing she gets from those around her that proves most helpful in this moment. It's unnerving, to say the least. And you really look to your support team. Just because you fell doesn't mean physically you can't do exactly what you came out to do. It's a matter of getting yourself to the place where you believe that you can. And sometimes when I don't feel amazing, I have to look to my coaches and my sports psych and my friends to tell me that I can do it because I'm the only one who's rattled if anyone doesn't believe in themselves, it's, I'm the only one at that point who doesn't believe in myself. Everyone else still believes in me. So I found myself today really pulling on my friends, really pulling on the people around me and my coaches to say, hey, you know how to do this. You've done this before. You've been in this situation before. You know what it's like. So you're pushing aside all your anxiety and you're, you're pulling on the courage that your friends give you. With friends, coaches, and fans looking on, Kelly drops into the half pipe for her first run. 
Look how much speed she carries into this first hit. Boom, huge front side air, holding onto that grab, then big backside 540. And look how fast she is going, front side 1080 right there. I knew that was coming out. Wow. So upping the ante with the technical mare as well. There's the Crippler 540 going upside down and kicking out on Method. Great run, the first 1080 we've seen from a lady here in our competition. She sticks it with a 94.5, including the first 1080 in this event, casting aside any doubts she may have had after the crash. It was really a test of, of me, uh, of my mental toughness today to to be able to get back on the horse after getting so, so worked and so discouraged in practice. Um, it was a really hard, hard day for me, but you know, to come out and land that first run is, uh, is a huge, huge achievement. Kelly's first run score set the benchmark for the rest of the field in the next two finals runs. Although they'd all try, none, not even Kelly, would score higher. You know, not only to put down a run, but to put down a run that was good enough for first place at the contest. Um, and I even pushed myself the rest of the event and was able to do runs I've never tried in contests before. So, you know, it, it, was a, it was a big win for me on many fronts today. Kelly Clark. After an exceptional day of riding for both the women and the men, Kelly would sit atop the podium with teammate and friend Ariel Gold. Ariel is uh, an amazing snowboarder. I'm, I'm so proud of that girl. To be quite honest, I see a lot of myself in her at that age. Uh, we we're really, really similar. This would put Kelly's career win total in the mid 60s, continuing her dominance as the most successful female in snowboarding history. And although the wins are important, what seems most critical to this athlete is the opportunity that these wins provide, which is the chance to help out. Kelly not only donated her time, but a check for $2,000. Valuable funds from a role model giving back through the sport that continues to give her so much.